views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. You are listening to Living Letter Radio. I'm Jason. And I'm Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific on Transformation Talk Radio. Living Lighter provides a revolutionary way to address what's truly holding you back. We have the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time, be living lighter. Join us now for a Living Lighter experience. This is Living Lighter Radio, and I'm Patricia. I'm here with my husband, Jason. Today, we're talking about health. This is part three of a three-part series. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what you are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. Okay, Jason, how can you decide or ask the right question whether to use traditional medicine or alternative medicine? You know, most people presume that we would always recommend alternative medicine because we have the ecosystem approach, right? You know, that's natural, that's green, that's organic. Um, that's holistic. That's holistic. But frankly, it's not true. Mm-hmm. And we have used both. So let me give you an example. Um, uh, my wife, who's sitting next to me right now, um, had a And heart- by the way, alive, well, and kicking. Yes. Um, had a heart valve replacement. Uh, what was it, about four or five years ago? Uh, no, it was more like seven. Okay. And um, um, alternative medicine never would have worked for that. It, it was something that that needed to be replaced. She was, you know, if it left unchecked, she could have died um, um, within weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, it had to be replaced. We chose a, um, to use a, um, it was a Bo- cal- yeah, bovine cow valve <laughs> and um, as opposed to mechanical instrument. No, um, don't ask me to move. Thank you very and, much. And, um, um, traditional medicine was for us at that point was perfect. Mm -hmm. Now Mm -hmm. um, let me give you, I'm using that as an example because it's a great one. Okay. We chose traditional medicine. She she had um, a successful surgery. You know, the doctors were ooing and aahing about her circulatory system because she looked so much, her circulatory system looked um, younger than she was. And um, in fact, he used it. He was showing the, 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 when you were just going into surgery, he was showing, it was a teaching hospital and he was showing some of the other students how this is an example of a really healthy um, circulatory system. Correct. So, you know, everything went um, okay. But then afterwards she got, um, it was a series of, there was three, three that I remember and migraines, she got migraines and devastating migraines. We didn't know, They were migraines at the time. In fact, they were so devastating. Um, On two occasions, we called 911 Mm -hmm. and had an ambulance. And I remember the first time, I don't know if you remember, sweetie, but you you basically said, call 911, you know, um, I'm dying. You know, I, well, I, 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 it felt like it. It yes. was so it, and it happened so fast. We didn't know what it was at that point, right? And they took her in. Of course, they checked her all out because she was, you know, heart patient, and um, they determined it was a migraine. Happened again. It was a migraine. Actually, I went to emergency. Um, I think four or five different times during um, a uh, what was it? A six week period of time. It was awful, and it was, it was debilitating. And uh, oh, not to mention, I lost thirty pounds. Yes, not to mention, I lost thirty pounds. Okay, well, and and but my point is, and this is the point that I'm trying to make, is they did great replacing the valve. Mm-hmm but they had no idea how to deal with the migraine and the heart doctor wasn't any help because ah, it's not my area, you know? <laughs> so they sent her off to neurologists. Neurologists did this, you know, all these, all these tests and contrast, you know, and I think it was an MRI with contrast, mm-hmm. nothing, mm-hmm. nothing, nothing. Yes. And, um, 
And so they were trying to give her medications to deal with the migraines. Well, you know, wait a minute. You know, it, it, you didn't have to be a genius to figure out that she, she never had any migraines before the heart surgery. And now she does. Right. They just kind of, um, they really dropped the ball. There was nothing. They didn't know how to deal with it. They didn't know how to, to um, frame it. And um, she had pain in her rib cage. You know, she had a rib that kept falling out of, out of whack. And eventually um, she um, was diagnosed. And this was a long time after, but she started Actually, having. it was two years, two years after. She, she started having vertigo right away related to the migraines. And the vertigo, um, um, she never had that either. And mm-hmm. it was also debilitating. And she was diagnosed with Meniere's disease she didn't have any of these symptoms before the heart surgery. They kind of turned a blind eye because as far as the heart doctor was concerned, they were taken care of. And everything was successful. Right. And although we couldn't have gone to alternative medicine for the heart valve, um, you know, obviously alternative medicine is much slower. We, we did go to alternative medicine and we used acupuncture for the migraines and they went away. And, and for the, and for the rib cage, and for the rib cage, we used um, acupuncture and chiropractic. And um, we're still working on the vertigo, but we're working with the chiropractor on that. Who, by the way, is amazing. Um, and we're going to talk about him later. But mm-hmm. you know, the um, here's the point. Okay. First of all, through all of this, we saw the trauma in your in her essence that was the root cause of this. Right. And. And just to give you, and this is really personal, but I think it's important to know for Patricia, it was the fact that her ability to love was really uneven. In other words, she would um, do a lot in order to be loved and expect very, very little in return. It was an imbalance. And the metaphor, of course, in your heart is is, is you the center of your emotions and how you love. And that imbalance was taking place not only in her heart, but in her life, all of her life, even since childhood. Right. And we've been clearing that. Frankly, we, we had already <laughs> been clearing that. We It wasn't that this was new. Um, we knew about this. We were clearing this. But now with this heart valve replacement, we kind of doubled down and focused. Right. And um, – um, so we used the alternative medicine. Acupuncture was amazing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she didn't, they were trying to give her these really strong drugs for migraines, which we didn't want to take. Some of them were um, um, some sort of, some form of opioid. And we didn't. Most want to, of them were. Yeah. We didn't want to go there. Um, and, um, and for the most part, they don't really, they kind of just shrug their shoulders. They don't really understand this or know how to do, deal with it or any of it. We know what it is. We've been clearing all along. And even with the Meniere's disease right now, um, her, her symptoms are very stable. She just had another hearing test and she's nothing's, you know, it's nothing's new. Worse. <laughs> yep. And, we're, and we keep, you know, we keep clearing because we know that's the source. Right. So, so Jason, so how do you decide between traditional and alternative medicine? We make it practical and personal. So there's, you know, there's cost, Mm -hmm. there's time and there's access. Okay. You know, sometimes it's just easier working with a traditional doctor. Sometimes it's easier working with an alternative medical practitioner. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you don't have access to an alternative medical practitioner or it's too expensive. Right. Um, And also, you know, there's some personal things we've gone to some, and we were just talking about this, some acupuncturists that, um, we, we had one just, just before we left, who was amazing. She was our friend. We love her. She, w- we would use her every, you know, all every day of the week. If we, if could. we could, she was amazing. <laughs> yes, but she was. we had been to some acupuncture set. We did not like it all. It just, we just stepped back like, Oh, that energy is awful. Stay away from us. Right. So, but here's the point, the ecosystem approach, the clearing, uh, the clearing is is the overarching thing for all of it. It's right. cheap. It's easy. It can be done while doing other things. It's time efficient. There's no cost to it. Right. You do it yourself. So. Okay. So, uh, Jason, is there a problem with both traditional and alternative medicines? Yes. Okay. It's the frame. Right. Most people go to um, both, both traditional and an alternative practitioner and say, 
um, I'm the machine, fix me. Oh, well. This part doesn't work, fix it. Okay. You know, this part doesn't work, fix that. And as long as you're doing it that way, um, you're not going to get the right result. Mm. The, the ecosystem approach is the way to get good results for all of it because um, it's cheap, it's easy, and it can be done while doing other other things. Okay, so so I, you know what? We've been told that people really like to hear examples of what we're talking about. And I want to talk about the frame for just a moment. And that frame, I'm going to use the story about Jason and he can jump in. But um, I happened to kind of watch the whole thing. This was about 10 years ago. And we were told by an alternative healer um, that um, Jason was Jason has, has, has had asthma all of his life and allergies all of his life. And um, this um, alternative healer um, who was very good, um, she saw that Jason's mother was sitting on his chest. And um, so he, of course, um, he said to me, Patricia, can you take a look at this? And okay, I never thought to look from that perspective at that time to him or about him. And I did. And sure enough, there she was. She was sitting right on his chest. Well, you know, I happen to love Jason's mother. And so I just want you to understand this woman would never do anything to hurt anyone. She doesn't have it in her. Especially me. Especially, oh my gosh, but she learned, and, and we <laughs> The know prodigal this because, son. <laughs> we know this because of the Enneagram type. Right. Her Enneagram type sees love as a form of possession. Right. And it's like breathing. If we confronted her with it, she wouldn't get it in a, you know, a million years. Exactly. So, so let me finish the story, Jason. So um, uh, I helped this alternative healer. We removed his mother. Um, from his chest and, 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 you know, he started breathing better within less than 24 hours. It was pretty amazing. And the, the other thing that was very, very interesting was that it was then that he started to like come alive in, in a way that said, I need to take better care of myself. And well, it, the, well, it was the, awesome. The metaphor for asthma is not being able to take in life. Right. And what was happening was, and, you know, forgive me, (laughs) mom, but understand what she was doing was she was taking his life force. She was keeping him from connecting to his own life force. So um, I know we didn't get to everything in this time. Let's just do the key points and we can go. go, Okay, we'll we'll get them next time. Go ahead, Jason. What are the key points? Traditional alternative um, methods can both be effective, but you have to go to the essence to heal the root. Right. Both traditional and the alternative frame the problem in ways that um, treat a person like a machine. Mm. Negative energy can move around and that frame doesn't work. Okay. We use the ecosystem approach as a foundation for both to get the best outcomes. Love it. And don't focus on healing illness. Focus on healing your essence for the best outcome. Okay. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about how to create a plan for your best health. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This is Debbie Pokornik with a break-free parenting tip. Parenting will always be a bit of a mystery. Who knows why some parenting ideas work and others do not? Or why some kids seem to succeed despite family setbacks, while others have so much given to them and yet fail to thrive. The one thing we do know is that once you have a child, you'll never be quite the same again. Awe-inspiring emotions like overwhelming love, extreme guilt, intense frustration, and incredible joy make this job second to none. Breaking free of parenting pressures means recognizing the pieces that make us unique pieces that we carry with us from the past and the pieces that are influenced by the society we live in. When we can pick and choose which pieces we want to keep around and change the others to align with our inner wisdom, we will feel more self-assured in our role as a parent. For information and to work with Debbie, visit EmpoweringNRG.com. Tune in to the Astral Insider, your portal for adventure, insight, and growth with Fernando Albert. And get ready to tour the astral realm, expand your life in ways you've never imagined, and call in for the journey of your life. 
with this world-renowned lucid dreamer, astral projectionist, psychic medium, and healer, Fernando Albert. This is every second and fourth Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. If you have a sense that you are meant for more, join Heather Allison every third Tuesday at noon Pacific as she explores an ancient, forgotten energy within us and helps us access our original archetypal blueprint. The Golden Path will help you remember the key to unlocking your life, love, success, and magic you were meant for. A key to unlocking your golden path. Visit heather-allison.com. Are you ready to create a life you'll really love? Then you'll want to tune in to the hit show Life Design Radio from adversity to awesome with Susan DiLorenzo. Live each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. No matter where you are in your adversity story, Life Design Radio has got you covered. Get ready to feel inspired, enlightened, and motivated. For more information about working with Susan, visit SusanDiLorenzo.com. To find answers to life's questions, you need to look within yourself. Dr. Glenna Rice brings your questionable conversations on Transformation Talk Radio each month. Tune in each month for insight into how you can live up to your full potential. Dr. Glenna is a physical therapist, certified access consciousness, and access body class facilitator. How does it get any better than this? For more information on Dr. Glenna Rice and her work, visit GlennaRice.com. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason, and I'm Patricia. We're talking about how to create a plan for your best health. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what you are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. You know, Jason, I'm going to back up just a little bit because I believe that the information in today's show is really really important. I would like you to give us an answer um, to the question of the pros and cons for um, alternative medicine and um, uh, traditional medicine. Can you do that for us, please? You know, and um, this is from our point of view, but we see that traditional medicine is usually more accessible. It's usually cheaper and I realized insurance these days is crazy and it may not be. Mm-hmm. A lot of times it's cheaper because you're already paying for it. So it's easier to get uh, reimbursed for something that you're already paying a lot of money for. Right. Um, a lot of times it's easier to implement. You just take a pill. Okay. The cons are the side effects. It can be more toxic. Mm-hmm. It's traditionally less human. You're much more of a number. And treated like a machine. Treated like a machine. And they don't coordinate. Right. Like with Patricia's heart valve, you know, mm-hmm. the neurologists and the heart, you know, they didn't talk to each other. They don't, you know. Yeah. So the alternative medicine, the pros, um, it's easier on the body. It's mm-hmm. more holistic. It's, uh, it providers usually a much more human. Right. I, you know, you, you lo- they're much more likable. Yes. And they deal with problems um, traditional medicine doesn't. Yes. The cons are it's expensive. Yeah. Um, it's hardly ever reimbursed by insurance. It's more difficult to access. Um, you have to be close to a provider. Um, there are many approaches and options. And um, sometimes it can be very difficult to implement because you you have to do most of the work. Right. And there's one more thing that you didn't mention. Some people don't always understand, get along, or can communicate with an alternative provider just like a traditional um, provider. So in other words, that's a pro and con on both sides. So let's get back on track here, Jason. How do you create a plan for your health? By taking an ecosystem approach versus a mechanical approach. Hmm. A mechanical approach is to see yourself as parts that need to be fixed. Wait, let's back that up. That's really an important point, everyone. You know, um, if, if your knee hurts, well, fix my knee. Well, chances are that that hurt knee comes from a lot of other different causes right and with the ecosystem approach we you know we try and see yourself as a whole to look for the root or foundation of your ecosystem and that root or foundation is your essence love it love it um you know 
so many people, they don't understand that. And there are, people are just starting to ask me, what do you mean to see myself as a whole? Jason, what, explain that, please. You have to understand the 80%. And if you haven't heard us talk about this in, in the past, go back to our two shows on discovery. Mm-hmm. But briefly put, when we look at um, people's essence now, in general, 80% of it is cumbered, is right. sick. Mm-hmm. You know, we're talking about healing. So 80% is sick. Um, your essence is sick. And I guarantee you, you can fix your physical body. You can spend huge amounts of time, energy, money, fixing your physical body, but it won't necessarily work on your essence. Right. But if you work on your essence, it will fix everything. It'll fix multiple things at a time. Okay. Okay. So, you know, and in order to do that, you have to know the traumas and stories from your essence. And if you don't know, clear until you do. It's not something you just you just say, okay, I'm going to think about my my stories and traumas. Well, a lot of people say, oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, and and that's not uncommon because we live in a programming world. We're not we're not trained to look at our traumas. We're trained to just get it done. Right. So to ignore all of our feelings and just do it. Okay. So, um, and by the way, uh, next week I'm going to step ahead just a minute and. Um, next week we're going to do a show. We're going to do one show or a couple of shows. I don't know. Um, that's not my area, as Jason says, on um, on uh, connecting with our essence, understanding our essence, and understanding what we're talking about regarding our essence. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Well, and the point about that is that all your symptoms, mm-hmm. all your physical symptoms, we're talking about health, is an expression of those traumas in your essence. Right. And if you don't fix your essence, they're going to either keep happening, it won't be healed, mm-hmm. or you'll it'll take care of one thing, but then it'll pop up someplace else. Right. If you ever played whack-a-mole, where you hit the groundhog one place and it pops Chuck up another. Chuck E. Cheese. Yes, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what you're doing when you're dealing with physical symptoms. Right. Uh, okay. Here's, so. here's the other point. Okay. A lot of us, and I see this all the time, Obsess, have fears, worries, and anxieties about toxins, um, germs, and just getting sick or having symptoms in general. And all that's negative energy. If you're afraid of bad health, that can be as bad as having bad health. That can make you as sick as anything else. People think that health is just kind of black and white. Either you're healthy or not. But how you feel about your health is probably as important as those physical symptoms. What's the answer? The ecosystem approach. Okay, okay. So so how do you use the ecosystem approach to focus on your physical health? Focusing on just physical health is not the answer. Mm. It will never lead to life satisfaction. The core reason for our existence is learning within our essence. But when there's 80% of our essence has negative energy, then our soul health is the root and it's sick. And with that much negative energy, having no physical symptoms is not likely. And if you do have no physical symptoms, it's bad English, but understand, <laughs> if you do have, don't have any physical symptoms, then it's going to pop up someplace else. Mm. It's going to be in your relationships. It's going to be in your money. It's going to, um, maybe you're going to have an early death. There's all sorts of things. That, that soul, your essence will express itself no matter what. And it will probably find the, the path of least resistance. Well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're saying that, uh, and I'm sure people are scratching their head in the audience. You're saying the best way to have great health is not to focus on great health? Yes. Well, I, I'm sorry. That's so very, very confusing. It is. Explain, please. If you focus if, if you focus on your physical symptoms, if you focus on your health, mm-hmm. it's not going to take you to the right place. Okay. The focus has to be on your essence oh. and that trauma in your essence. And because most you know, even people that are intuitive don't see the, the extent yeah. and the, the amount of trauma and negative energy in your essence. And so they don't focus on it the way they should. You know, I've had, I've gone to alternative practitioners, even other intuitives when we were just starting out. And they say, well, do this, this, and this, and you'll be fine. No, <laughs> they, didn't, they, didn't, they didn't scratch the surface. It, was, it, took, it took me a lot more. And for the most part, the ecosystem approach is not something that we were taught by some other um, practitioner practitioner or person. We learned it by developing our own intuition and then looking Correct. and then um, um, working with 
clients and then looking again and then working some more. You know, this is the culmination of 20 work, 20 years of work. Right, right. And uh, by the way, I admit it's been a lot of fun and, and extremely um, interesting and educational, but we have more to go, all of us. Well, and so, but here's the point. Okay. If you focus on the physical symptoms only, you're not going to get to that trauma in your essence. Oh. But if you let your essence lead, you might have a physical symptom one day and then a problem with the relationship the next, but it all comes from your essence. And if you focus on your essence, it's far more efficient. It's far more, um, uh, far easier. Okay. And you don't do the Chuck E. Cheese with the whack-a-mole. <laughs> well, you hit it over here and you hit it over there and it cop- pops up in different places. That's what happened, again, with um, Patricia's heart valve. Right. It wasn't just the heart valve. And it, it expressed, was- you know, that trauma in her essence expressed itself as a migraine. And then now it's expressing itself as vertigo and the Meniere's disease. And we're still working on it. But we're working on it because we're every focused, day, folks. <laughs> we're focusing on the level of essence. Okay, so so let me make sure. What is the little known part that most people miss about all of this, Jason? Negative energy and the way it affects us is also holistic. Explain. Please. That means that it can express itself as cancer, or divorce, or bankruptcy or any other negative happenings in our life. So if we're just focusing on our physical health, we're motivating the negative to focus on another area of our life. Okay, okay. Oh, wait. Let, let me, so, Jason, let, let's just take this question. What happens when they find a cure for cancer? That's a great question. There's no, And I want to say, first of all, that I'm not opposed to any sort of medical advances that would find a cure for cancer or any other disease. Okay. But without understanding that the essence is the root, if you find a cure for cancer, your essence will just find a different way to express that trauma. And chances are that other way will be even more. um, Because your, your essence wants you to listen intense and hear. We already kind of see it because our health in general has been improving over the last hundred, 200, 300 years. And as we improve our health, What's happening in our world? Well, mm. the, the hate and the oh. bitterness and the, and the lack of intellectual precision and no, no connection to fact or what's, what's real right. is epidemic. It is. It and is. that's because part of our, a lot of our physical symptoms have been um, um, not, not really um, resolved based on our essence, right. but based on our physical problems. You have a heart heart. Um, heart attack where you just put in a shunt and you and you um, take some blood thinners and you're good to go keep going and you never deal with those negative emotions that your sense say hey come on let's deal with that but you and i both know that's not the truth exactly we know it's not the truth and and so i just i just want to want to say this is really 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 important everyone understand that the ecosystem approach it is a holistic way to do things it's a hell of a lot cheaper than a lot of the things that um, you can um, do it yourself. There's no cost. Exactly. That's then that's even in this radio show, we'll do it at the end. Exactly. You do it for free. Exactly. It doesn't matter. Exactly. And what I like to say about it, it's that it's doesn't matter how much money you have. No, you don't have to have access to a provider. You know, you can be up in the, in a mountaintop someplace all by yourself and still use it. Exactly. It's completely democratic. It right. means it doesn't mean doesn't based on your religion how much money you have, where you live, okay. um, and, and um, um, who the government is. And it's not <laughs> limited in any way. All right. So I'm going to stop you, Jason. What are the key points of this segment? The best way to approach health is to see yourself as an ecosystem, not a machine. Obsessing about your health or having fear of sickness is negative energy. It can make you sick too. Okay. The ecosystem approach is democratic, free, accessible to everyone, and is the best for your health. And that the goal of healing your essence and evolving, um, the goal for your life is healing your essence and evolving, not physical symptoms. If you're focusing on physical symptoms, you miss the point. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about things we do on a regular basis for our health. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.
What is a brilliant culture and how do we create them? Why are they important? Claudette Rowley has created a breakthrough five-step process to help you align your culture with your business strategy for exceptional results. Looking for a culture that drives organizational excellence? Listen to Cultural Brilliance Radio, the second and fourth Friday of each month at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern on Transformation Talk Radio. To learn more or work with Claudette, visit culturalbrilliance.com. Have you ever wondered if there's a way to heal the deep? hidden inner issues, wounds, beliefs, and traumas. The journey into spiritual healing engages people in all areas of their lives to heal themselves and others. Tune in each month on Transformation Talk Radio as Dr. Jaffe brings conversations of healing of body, mind, and spirit as he merges the excellence of traditional medicine with the beauty of spiritual healing. For more information about Dr. Jaffe, this show, and his work, visit drjaffemd.com. Disease, one of the most dreaded words in our vocabulary. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. Did you know traditionally we have viewed disease as a degenerative process? Disease is better understood when we view it as disease in the human body. Disease means without ease. Health is not merely the absence of disease. It's when every part of the body works together effortlessly. Relaxed and at ease. It's that relaxed state that lets energy flow in waves through and around the entire body. Every organ has an electrical charge, and when overcharged or undercharged, disease occurs. And it is an effort to go through our day. We are able to determine the exact disease of the body and design a specific solution to correct the nutritional imbalance. Contact us at 888 777 4232. That's 888-777-4232. And visit us at MaryJaneMack.com. It's time to get your life back on Burn Bright Today with Jennifer Marcinelli. Tune in each month on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Learn to move from the darkness of burning out to the light of burning bright. Jennifer is redefining stress and the energetic causes of burnout, shining a light on process to get your life back. For more information about Jennifer and her work, visit burnbrighttoday.com. Darcy Pariso is your connection to spirit, energy, and healing. You can meet Darcy in person at upcoming events throughout Seattle. Do you have questions about your animal companions, yourself, or do you desire to communicate with loved ones on the other side? Darcy will connect you and get answers. Darcy can also work with energy healing to help you and your animal companions feel more balanced and recharged. Visit DarcyPariso.com slash events. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason and I'm Patricia. We're talking about things we do, meaning what Jason and I do on a regular basis for our health. And we're going to talk about what we can do for you. We use an ecosystem approach to you, which is much different than what you are commonly taught. We see human beings as ecosystems that need to be uncovered instead of programmed. Human potential becomes infinite with our ecosystem approach. Okay, Jason. Can you share some of the things we do, you know, and what are the basis for those things? Well, um, I'll talk about both things that we do and what the basics are. And frankly, the first thing is the easiest, the simplest, and the most profound, which is we clear constantly, consistently, and specifically. We do it while we're driving. We'll do it while we're talking. You know, we go for walks often and we'll clear then. We focus on the issues that affect us in the moment. and. You know, like we t- we're talking about, um, you know, the metaphor for Patricia's heart valve was the uneven ap- expression of love in the world. And now as she tries to get her footing in this new way, she can't, she can't, um, she gets dizzy, which is a, a metaphor for the vertigo. Right. So, you know, f- um, it's it's all clear to us in terms of that trauma. And, and that's what we clear all the time. Right. So if you're overweight, sickly, and um, haven't exercised in years, Start with clearing first. That's the way to start. And if and if you're not overweight, clearing or, or, or and sickly, all of that, still start with clearing. 
today. Yes. It's yes. it's amazing. It is amazing. So, so some what are the, some of the other things we do? These are the basics, and we use this with my mom, who mm-hmm. was who's basically in the traditional medicine, medical model. She, you know, she was a nurse all of her life. So you know this uh, some of this weird stuff she doesn't do. But um, um, one of the things that we did when she came to live with us was to to make sure her sleep was right and oh. eight hours, and you know to get up to go to bed when it's when it gets dark and to get up when it gets light. Um, we do that. We know that there's some people that just are night owls. Um, we're not them. Yes. Um, but um, um, getting eight hours of sleep is so important and it's so hard, but it's so important. Right. Um, so that's one of the basics. Exercise. You know, we do two or three walks a day and we go to the gym three times a week. Um, um, we use the hot tub. Um, we, we do things. We try and um, stay active. But, you know, we're not obsessive about it. And if we're busy, sometimes because of the weather or, you know, exactly. it, yeah. summertime, it gets 100 degrees here at four. So we don't, we don't take our dogs um, like, out and walk at that time. It's right. just too hot on the pavement, and whatever. So, um, you know, we use the gym. One of the, just, just a footnote, you know, and this goes to the, the next one, which is to be in nature. Mm-hmm. That is so healing. And whether you just have a, a, a plant in your backyard or you can go and be in a park versus um, being in your office building all day. Exactly. Go be in nature. It's so healing. It's so fundamental. And it's calming. Yes. It is, it is amazing. You know, we go to the gym all the time, three times a week, and we see these young people get up, get up on a treadmill. And, you know, I want to say there's nothing wrong with the treadmill. You know, when it's 100 degrees out or 30 below, treadmill, hey, that's, that it makes works. perfect sense. Yes, it does. You know, but, um, um, and we, we see some people who can barely stand up. So they hold, hold on to the bars <laughs> while they're walking, which is great because that's what you have to do. Yes, getting but that circulation going and I so forth. I see young people jumping on a treadmill when it's beautiful outside. I think, what? Something's wrong with this picture. Because they're all focused on their health. They're focused on their body and how they look. And they're focused on treating themselves like a machine. Exactly. So, you know, we try and eat the best we can. One of the, one of the basics for us is smoothie in the morning. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, protein, minerals, vitamins, minerals. It, and it tastes good. None of this green stuff. You know, we, we make, <laughs> Patricia makes an amazing smoothie and it tastes good. Yes. You know. Thank you, Jason. Um, superfoods like algae. We, we're we're right. starting to use that. We've used it off and on over right. time. And um, it takes a while because it creates a detox and we can only take so much at a time. Exactly. We're trying to do the intermittent fasting, but we haven't figured that out completely yet. We, you know, because we, one of the things that we do a lot is um, routine and we've used routine to our great benefit. That doesn't work for everyone. Someone, some people can't do a routine, right. but Patricia and I do everything together anyways. So we do our routine and we start to change that. It's, it takes a little longer for us to work it out. And, you know, old dogs, new tricks, that does take a lot longer, I admit. We, use a, we have a hot tub that we use a lot. You yes, know, it's, we do. Um, it's great for relaxing. Uh, Patricia exercises in it. Um, yeah, on a regular basis when possible. It, it works out very nicely. But here's the other thing that's kind of the basic. Don't be compulsive about everything. Or some, anything, if you can keep from it. Some people say, oh, I, you know, um, I have to work out every day. Or otherwise, something really bad is going to happen. No, that's just yeah. fear. That's negative energy. You know, um, we adapt. Um, uh, one of the things I do in the gym, you know, I never try and push myself to the point where, um, for me, in the gym, it's sustainable. It's not trying to get as fast as I can to the to the highest weight. It's to, to make sure that I can... I can um, go next week to the gym and still work out, you <laughs> yeah. know? And so we see so many people that say, oh my gosh, I'm so, I'm so out of shape. I got to get, I got to get better right now. Yes. And then they go and hurt themselves. And of course, then three months later, they can't do anything. So. Exactly. Exactly. So, all right, Jason, what, what else? Well, here's the other thing. Okay. We use practitioners, whether it's alternative or medical doctors mm-hmm. and, we're very practical about it. It has to do with cost, access. We used to live in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. There's a lot of access to medical doctors and alternative practitioners. Right. Um, um, but then there was traffic. So access was a big deal. <laughs> you yeah. know, if you've ever been in the Bay Area, you know, whew, traffic, you can't just go um, um, anywhere, anytime because it'll take you a long time. It's, right. a, it's a penalty. Yes. 
we have this. Um, so when we came here, we actually found a chiropractor who's amazing. You know, we call him Dr. K and uh, um, he, he's accessible to us. Um, um, and, and this is a really important po- point. We like him. We, and we, we also can, because we can see, because we're intuitive, he has amazing skills. He just has a natural ability. He has this intuition where his, his hands just go to the right place and he knows how to do it and he does it. And um, he's a true healer. Yes. And we use him. We used to use a lot of acupuncture before, but it's not accessible to us anymore. So not at the moment. Yep. Um, we use um, um, Dr. K and it, and it works for us. It's a balancing, you know, chiropractic is a balancing um, modality. So is, so is um, um, acupuncture. Um, there's a lot of alternative um, uh, practitioners. We use um, nutritionists from time to time. Right. You know, so, and I, I just, I just want to say, um, I wish everybody had a Dr. K that they could work with um, for the balancing in their life. And um, I'm so grateful to have this doctor in my life for the simple fact of he understands the balance that I personally need for the Meniere's disease because he, he helps um, remove the, the bones away from what the pressure is in my ear. And um, which, by the way, was caused from <laughs> the heart surgery. It's a long story. But the point I'm making is this guy is amazing. And he knew exactly what to do as soon as we knew what was going on. He even knew before, but um, pretty amazing. So I wish everybody had one. So, Jason, what are the key points? We clear constantly, consistently, and specifically using the ecosystem approach. Mm-hmm. We're never compulsive about anything. Clearing is always the default or the go-to. The basics for health, sleep, diet, exercise, cleansing, and healing your essence. Healing your essence is the most important part. And healing the essence creates better health, prevents bad health, and creates true healing. Love it. So, Jason, since we are um, working with energy here, how do we work with energy? I'm going to be very brief. Okay. But basically, um, you can sit in any way. And use your mind's eye, as we say, and to eliminate, gather up all those things that we say to eliminate, whether it's an emotion or a concept, mm-hmm. and blow it into a trash can. Mm-hmm. Use your imagination. It can be an imaginary trash can or an actual trash can. We'll empty it. Okay. And then we're going to activate life force. And we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to pull in life force. By the way, everyone has access to life force, but we're going to pull it in through the top of our head, let it go all the way down our torso, our arms and our legs. And um, I like to stop it, turn it around, and any negative energy that's been left behind, um, I like to, have, like to use life force energy to help me remove it out of my body. So stay tuned when we come back. We're going to help you get started clearing your essence for a better health right now, today. This is Living Lighter with Jason and Patricia with an ecosystem approach to your life. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Tune in to Lucid Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Neff. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet. Welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Do you want the knowledge and wisdom to understand where spirituality, science, and psychology intersect? Then join the Karmic Path Radio Show with Tina and Laura on TransformationTalkRadio.com Thursdays at 4 p.m. Pacific. 
Follow this charmingly, disarmingly dynamic duo as they explore how psychic ability, spirituality, and karmic law tie together. For more information on Tina, Laura, and their groundbreaking work, visit thekarmicpath.com. Celebrating 40 years of peace through music. Dr. Pat Basili is thrilled to be partnering with Dudley and Dean Evanson, co-founders of Soundings of the Planet. Music and video created for peace and healing. Immerse yourself in benefits of music for meditation, relaxation, and stress reduction. This peaceful and meditative form of music is available for free on all streaming services. Search Dean Evanson on Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, and iTunes, or visit soundings.com for more information. Are you ready to finally feel empowered and knowledgeable in your political stance? Let Marsha Padilla Goad educate you on exactly how important grassroots advocacy is in a relatable way to all parties and all perspectives. Tune in to Grassroots Advocacy Radio with Marsha every first Tuesday of the month at 12 p.m. Pacific and 3 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. For more, visit DynamicsInPublicAffairs.com. This is Living Lighter Radio with Jason, and I'm Patricia. Right now, we're going to help you get started clearing your essence. Are you ready? Here we go. I direct all my resources in all dimensions to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see my essence has trauma and communicates with physical symptoms. Gather up all those veils and illusions, blow it into that trash can. It can be imaginary. It can be an actual one. Take a breath. And to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see that negative energy moves around and manifests in different ways. Take a breath. And to eliminate the false belief that our symptoms point to something specific that's wrong, um, that's a physical condition as opposed to from our essence that can express itself in multiple ways. Take a breath. Remove those false beliefs right now. And to eliminate the barriers so I can begin to see the trauma and the stories in my essence that need to be healed. Take a nice breath. Blow it out. And to eliminate the fear I have of the stories. By the way, everybody has the fear of the stories. They're afraid they're not going to like what they see or they won't be able to handle it or it'll be too much or it'll say that they're nothing but a bad person. But they've already suppressed them. Uh, Yes. Because they've been so painful. And that's one of the reasons that they've been so, uh, you know, That they suppressed suppressed them, yes. Yes. So so this is what we clear. Here we go. The shame, guilt, and unworthiness that is part of my trauma that's connected to, to those stories. Take a breath. And along with it, and to eliminate the fear of the stories. Take a breath. And to eliminate the anger and bitterness and resentment I have about anything that is part of my trauma. Take a breath. And to eliminate the numbness that I have and that I've been trained with and trained with for centuries to ignore the trauma and the drama and the chaos and um, the, the stories that make me feel guilt and unworthy. I release and let go all of those veils and illusions, all of that negative energy right now. Take a breath.
and to eliminate my fears, worries, and anxieties that I have about anything in my life. Mm. Take a breath. And to eliminate the stress and anxiety about germs and illness and symptoms that are negative energy and is so toxic to me and my thinking and feeling. Take a breath. You don't need that. And to eliminate for all those germaphobes, hypochondriacs, and um, um, just anxious people, you know, the, the veils and illusions so I can see that that anxiety is a negative energy and it can be cleared. Absolutely. Take a breath. And to eliminate any obsessiveness, fears, or anxieties I have about my physical health. Take a breath. And I'm going to add to that one and about my emotional health as well. Take a breath. Jason, you ready to activate life force? Let's do it. All right. I direct all my resources in all dimensions to activate life force, the most powerful energy that anyone and everyone has access to. Starting right now, just take a breath. Let it come right in through the top of your head. Let it go all the way down your torso to the tips of your toes. Turn it around. Push out any negative energy. Right now, blow it out. And activate life force so I can respect my essence as a source of true healing. Take a breath. And to activate life force so I can trust working on the trauma in my essence is the best thing for my physical health. Love it. Take a breath. Bring that bring that life force in right now. Top of your head. Down to the tips of your toes. Blow it out. And to activate life force so I can know that working at the level of my essence is the most effective and efficient thing and... Um, energy I can use and connect with right now. Take a breath. And to activate life force so I can be happy and healthy and um, aware and have clarity and willingness to work on me. Me so I can connect with my essence. Take a breath. And to activate life force so I can love myself enough to be peaceful and happy right now. Take a breath. Mm. Top of your head. Torso, tips of your toes. So, Jason, I kind of gave it away a little while ago. What are we going to talk about next week? Well, we're going to talk about your essence or your soul. And, you know, if you take away religion or spirituality and from the discussion, what's what you have left, and this is what we see. This is not something that we believe. It's something that we see, that how to make it practical and useful in everyday life, how to use it, how to talk to it. Your essence is the greatest mentor that you could ever have. If you ever need advice, go to your essence. That's where the, where the good advice um, lies. Exactly. You just have to know how to access it and how to use it in a practical way. That's what we're going to talk about next week. Okay. So if some part of you gets the importance of healing in your essence with the ecosystem approach, mark your calendar. Living Lighter Radio is every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern time. If you can't listen at that time, our show is recorded, and you can go to our website at www.livinglighter.org and look for the radio tab. You know, if you want to have a better life and something got to you today about your health and said, oh my gosh, maybe a light bulb went off. Mm. Maybe it's my soul. The way to keep connected with us is to sign up for our newsletter. Mm. Every week we give you, we, as part of our newsletter, we give you some clearings. We give you the backstory to Living Lighter. We talk about ourselves in a little more depth and uh, we talk, talk about the the show for next week. But if you sign up for a newsletter, all you have to do is go to www.livinglighter.org, 
go to the newsletter tab. We just ask for your name and your email address. It's free. It's the best way you can start working with your essence. Like we said on the show, this is free. It's democratic. You don't have to have um, a lot of money. You don't have to um, be in a special place. It doesn't matter. As long as you're hearing our voice, you have access to this information. Exactly. So, and along with that, if you really want to have a better life, make clearing constantly, consistently, and specifically a part of your life. Sign up for that newsletter. And, um, and, and really see a difference in your life. I, I can't begin to tell people how important that is. So if you got a benefit today or had some fun, would you like us on Facebook? We're at livinglighter.org on Facebook. And um, we always preview the show for the following week on, on our Facebook page. I love those likes. You know, I like to be liked. And um, um, if this made a difference for you, if you're saying, oh, this is why I've been having so many problems. Um, if that connected to you, just just give us a like on Facebook and share some comments too. We'd love to hear them. We'll connect next week, Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This is Transformation Talk Radio, and you're listening to Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. Wishing you a lifetime of living lighter. Thank you for listening to Living Lighter Radio with Jason and Patricia. I'm Patricia. We have an ecosystem approach to your life. Tune in weekly as we discuss what's truly holding you back. We offer you the tools you need to reach your goals and at the same time be living lighter. For more information, visit our website at www.livinglighter.org.